The Debt Management Office says a total domestic debt for the 36 states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory stood at 4.1 trillion naira as at the end of March 2020. According to the DMO, Lagos led with a debt profile of 444.22 billion naira, followed by Rivers that had a debt of 266.93 billion naira. Abia, Adamawa, Akwaibom, and Anambra had debts of 69.63 billion, 101.58 billion naira, 240.03 billion naira, and 33.91 billion naira, while Bauchi, Bayosa, Bainway, and Borno had 100.4 billion naira, 154.95 billion naira, 116.19 billion naira, and 83.38 billion naira, respectively. All the state details can be found on the DMO website. And now we have a quick conversation with Mr. Chris David. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. Thank you for having me. All right, so let's quickly start with the, what would you say are the implications of this 4.1 trillion naira debt? And is borrowing a normal part of funding for a state's growth? Yeah, uh, when you want to talk about um, debt burden of a, a state or a nation, as the case may be, it has to be within uh, a contest. And um, what I want to, uh, the, the, the contest I'm, which I'm going to discuss, the, the debt profile of these states uh, is um, uh, the IMF debt sustainability framework. Now, this framework has three bases for assessing uh, debts and uh, the risk. One of them is you look at your, your debt service compared to the revenue you are generating. The second one is look at the, the total value of your debt service, your, your debt versus the GDP, and look at your external debt compared to your export. Now, these three bases will give you the yardstick to either say that the debt of a, of a state or a nation is either sustainable or not, or whether the debt is low risk, yeah. so, so, moderate so, so, risk, so quickly, high risk, quickly, where would or you rate distress. Quick, yeah, quickly, where would you rate um, the figures from, from what we are seeing now, um, since now, we have established uh, how to, how to um, of course, uh, understand it better? Yeah, so now when you look at, uh, for instance, when you look at that of legal state, 444 billion uh, debts, the yardstick you can quickly measure it with is what is the revenue that uh, legal state is generating. Now, if you look at the budget, of the 2020 budget of um, legal state, um, the Estimated revenue to be generated in terms of IGR for legal state is actually 886 billion. Now, if you now just oppose this figure against the debt service, you will say that legal state is doing well, or you can say uh, the, the, the risk is moderate because Going by this estimate simply means that Lagos State will be able to service its debt okay. based on the IGR. Yeah, but they I, have I, I guess we can't say I guess we can't say same for you know a couple of other states. But let's yeah, move so on. Yeah, so that's why I said it yeah. is not is what once you want to talk about debt sustainability or risk, you have to put it in context. Yeah and benchmark them against this world standard uh, uh, matrix okay. that uh, should be used in measuring debt. Okay, so, so let me... for, as far as legal state is concerned, yeah. uh, using the revenue and versus the debt service, you, you can say that, yeah, legal state has a moderate risk. Okay, so, so it, it, a lot of people would expect that um, funds that are borrowed by these states would be placed into certain, you know, um, aspects of growth. So let's ask, um, borrowing for infrastructure or borrowing for agricultural or industri industrial development, which would you stay, say that the state should be more focused on? Now, the, 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 the prudent thing to do by any uh, state 
or by the uh, Finance uh, Commission of any state is that when you are borrowing, you must make sure that whatever purpose for which you are borrowing the money should be able to repay itself. But what we see in Nigeria is that we are actually borrowing for consumption. That is what is making it bad. And that is why when you look at those other states, you say that um, the debt uh, risk is very high or they are in a distressed position because the purpose for which they are borrowing the money it, it cannot repay the, 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 those debts. Okay, nicely put. So the yeah. best thing to do for any uh, state or uh, finance uh, commissioner or minister of uh, finance is to channel the funds borrowed into infrastructure or investment that can repay it, the, the debt itself. Lastly, sir, um, let's talk about the Nigerian states and the ability to generate sustainable IGR. Because I believe that if they have IGR that, you know, like from what you described with Lagos, um, it would mm -hmm. reduce their eagerness to borrow. So, so how much does this say about Nigerian states and their ability to generate sustainable IGR? Well, um, uh, for Nigerian states generally, uh, the issue is quite fundamental because it borders on the constitution of the country. Because when you look at the powers that states have to generate funds, yeah. for most states, apart from Nigeria and uh, some few, uh, apart from Lagos and some few other states, they don't actually have that capacity because of the existing laws that we have. So I have said this time and over again that for Nigeria to witness prosperity, we need to review our laws okay. in the country so that these laws can favor most states to be able to generate IGR from themselves. But the way it is, now most states cannot do that because most of those laws are laws that the federal government has power to legislate on. Okay. So until we right. will we'll, we'll, we, we'll we have to, we have to review end it here, those sir. laws. Yeah. We would have to end it here, sir. We uh, appreciate your time for, and of course, thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Chris Daniel. We hope to speak with you again. Chris David. Thank Chris you. David, I beg your pardon. Thank you so much. Yeah.